Bina, Konbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here, coming at you with <coughs> first cough, and then Ezra chapter 5. And I'm going to start at verse 1 in just a second, a little backdrop here. In Ezra chapter 4, the Jews are building the temple, and the foundation's already been laid, so they're building the temple up. Well, then some guys come in and start opposing them, and they actually write a letter to the king, Artaxerxes, at that time, and they were like, hey, this, this, uh, this group of people that are building the temple, yeah, they used to be a mighty nation, and if they build this temple... They're probably going to stop paying taxes. They're probably going to stop serving you. They're going to think that they are a people and a nation once again. It's probably going to hurt your treasury. So the king wrote back and was like, Holy crap, don't let them do that! That was obviously a paraphrase, but that's essentially what happened. And, of, of course, you know things get righted, but I like the transition period and how things started to be made right. And that is where Ezra chapter 5, excuse me, Verse 1 comes into play. Then the prophet Haggai and Zechariah, the son of Iddo, prophets, prophesied to the Jews who are in Judah and Jerusalem in the name of the God of Israel who was over them. So Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, and Jeshua, the son of Josadak, rose up and began to build the house of God which is in Jerusalem. And the prophets of God were with them, helping them. I'm going to assume that means helping them as far as just physical manual labor. I mean, we're building a physical building, so physical manual labor is needed. I'm also going to assume, since the, it mentioned in the verse previous that they prophesied to the Jews, that they were also helping, uh, I was like, what's the word I was looking for? They were just helping them. Just help, nothing else. They were helping them, not just with manual labor and construction, they were also helping them as far as motivation, encouragement, a little oomph. A little uh, wind in their sails. Yeah, the king, the pre at this and at this point, um, power had also changed hands. It was Artaxerxes who shut him down, and the person who ended up fixing this is going to be a king Darius, who is spoken of in Ezra chapter six. So it looks like things weren't resolved in Artaxerxes' time. I'm guessing, and I could be completely wrong, that they waited for him to be out of power, waited for the next guy to be in power. And the prophets were like, thus saith the Lord, keep building the temple. So I'm guessing there was some wisdom as far as the timing goes. But another thing, they still stood up to what had been the law for, and I don't know how long it was. It didn't really mention in those chapters, you know, how long was um, Artaxerxes in power? How long were they not building the temple? How long were they building the temple before that? Maybe it is somewhere in the book of Nehemiah. And maybe it's somewhere later on in the book of Ezra. It has not been mentioned just yet, so I don't know. I just, I have no idea. But there came a point where they had, where the prophets were like, you know what, guys? Yeah, that's what you've been doing. That's what the old king said. And you haven't heard a command to do anything different. Well, we're giving you a command from the Most High God. You need to do this now. And they listened, and they obeyed. And it's much, much, much more important to follow what God says over what man says. Should they have started building sooner? I don't know. I have no idea what the time frames and time lapses were here, so I really can't, I, I have nothing to even base an assumption on. But I do know that when the prophet said, thus saith the Lord, that the people listened. And God did not wait around for the king to get his crap straight. God was like, okay, here's what I want done. Do this. And the prophets prophesied, the people listened, and the people obeyed, which is awesome. And when God speaks, we may not have the government on our side. Uh, we may not have our family or our friends on our side. But when God speaks, we need to listen and obey. Because His word is far more important than any, other, uh, any of the other words floating around inside your head, in your home, in your community. In your, li in your little uh, culture or subculture that you spend time with, the people you hang out with, and far more important than your state, city, or nation. God is the God of heaven and earth. And that includes your little spot of land and your little piece of property 
and the little areas you're invested in. He's got over that too. So keep him in mind first and foremost above all things. Obey him and place him first and foremost above all things. And he will lift you up. And we will see in chapter 6 how things get better. I'm actually going to um, research that right now. And I'm planning on putting out four videos today. Two video game videos and two preaching videos to make up for the videos that I kind of left behind over the weekend. So going to make that up tonight. Thank you guys very much for watching this video. I love you and God bless.